Steve, my good friend Catherine. Listen, in the United States, it is Friday afternoon in Australia. You are living in the future, my friend. It's Saturday morning. Thank you so much for waking up very early to do this. I really appreciate this. Uh, and again, what time is it there, Aussie time? 5.30 a.m. Well, God bless you for waking up so early. Uh, I'm so and I'm really, what's that? Yeah, you're refreshed. You've got I'm your tea, fresh. right? <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, Catherine, there it is. Oh, and your your beautiful United States mug, too. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I want to talk about is I, I want to dispel some myths about book publishing. And, Catherine, I know you help a lot of great authors um, get their book done. Um, and yeah. you and I were talking about this beforehand, about for there's so many of us uh, that we have the book idea. Um, and it just sits on the, it's literally, the idea sits on the shelf. We don't want the idea yeah. sitting on the shelf. We want the books sitting on the shelf. No, we want the books being read, but yeah. yeah. So so we want to help people with some great ideas uh, for how to get that book done once and for all. But Catherine, to your point that we were talking about this, is stop overcomplicating this because we were talking about how, you know, anytime you want to get something big done, it's overwhelming yeah. when you look at the big thing, right? And we we really yeah. need to just break this up into bite-sized pieces. And I know you've been helping me because, again, I've had that book idea. I'm not. I'm actually not quite ready for it. I'm going to be ready for it next year. There's a few more things I need to get done professionally, and then we are working together. Um, <laughs> but, Catherine, would you mind um, just kind of as we kick off on this wonderful Friday afternoon, a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so thanks for that, Josh. Um, so yeah, my name's Catherine Mora and, and I'm the head of uh, Change Empire Books where we help people write and publish beautiful nonfiction books. So, you know, self-help books, business books, how-tos and memoirs, that kind of thing. And that's so they can get their voice out into the world and change lives of readers. And, and really we're looking at elevating people to that thought leader kind of status. Yeah, so... Um... Who do you typically work with and how do you help them? So mostly it's coaches and consultants and those sort of service providers and, and you know, who are entrepreneurs with their own business who really want to, to raise their profile and open those doors of opportunity. So, and we help them right from their book idea with getting clear on that, picking the right book, the right genre, the right topic, the right audience, like all of the planning stuff all the way through the writing process and, and keeping them accountable and giving them feedback through that. And then we have a whole team of editors, designers, formatters, publishers, all the people who do the technical polishing stuff. And then we also have a whole group of incredible experts who help people with getting paid speaking and, you know, podcasts and, and uh, courses, funnels, media, that kind of thing. So the whole gamut from kind of idea to standing on stages, getting paid 20 grand. <laughs> yeah. Now to our social media friends who are watching this and you're looking at the title and you're like, it says something about Amy Dixon, be happy. I apologize. I forgot to update the title. Amy Dixon is another one of my very good friends. And we did something a couple of weeks ago um, about happiness. Amazing, um, Amy. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so uh, just now updated the title. I don't know if that'll update, but um, very important is that um, by the end of this conversation, um, Catherine, you, uh, like I said, you've helped so many people. But one thing I love about you is that, like, I can take a book idea to you and you'll be all like, either like, hmm, or you'll be like, no, no, no. That, and you have the experience because you've worked with so many authors to help people know, hmm, that's good, but, and then kind of work with them to help them craft yeah. something that is actually going to help them with their business objectives, their business goals, and ultimately help them make a lot of money and help a lot of people. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about the business side and the money side of, of being an author? Yeah, so um, it's a really important um, point to ponder. So with books, 
yes, you can definitely make money from book sales and people do, all right? And there are ways of doing that. And we know the kinds of books that are going to just make some money with sales. But where the really big money comes is through leveraging the book and making the book into a business, as you said, where the book is that sort of foundation that you leverage to do the other things. Because once you've got a high quality book, and you're perceived as an expert and that sort of go-to person in your industry. And that happens because when people see a high quality book, they automatically assume that you're an expert. And I actually had this conversation with someone yesterday that if you're not a doctor, how do you give yourself credibility? Well, the minute you say, well, I'm the publisher of the author of this book, people say, ah, well, they must know about that if they wrote a book about it. And when you do that, it's amazing the opportunities that you get. I've, I've oh, yeah. spoken to people and have clients who have used the book to land paid speaking gigs. One woman I talked to is actually landing like 100% of the gigs that she goes for as because she sends them a copy of her book, like the event manager. I've got clients who, I've got a client who sold the book and when people come to her for the book and join her group, she then is selling programs. She went from making a hundred grand in the year before her book came out to a year later in November, when we last talked about her income, she was making one to $200,000 a month selling her membership and courses and all of these things fully organically because people yeah. came to her because of the book. So the book didn't generate the sale, but it, it gave her a really qualified lead, right? Um, yeah. I have other clients who are getting paid 20 to 25,000 US to get up and speak for 40 minutes about their topic of expertise. Um, so the, the book is this amazing segue into these much bigger opportunities where you are that expert and thought leader on a topic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So having a book can really open up a lot of opportunities. And, the, you know, the reality is, um, you know, as the typical author in terms of the number or percentage of people they're going to read it cover to cover you know the numbers aren't real great on that so what's really important though is that you realize the value where, where the value really is in having a book and that it's a door opener it's a big time authority uh indicator and if you have the book and you just have to do it one time uh then yeah. now you have that working for you and your advantage and things just get a little bit easier and the reason why is because your perceived authority is just higher than it was without the book absolutely and you know i always obviously advocate writing a great book and we help people with doing that so that if someone does bother to read it that they <laughs> say wow this is great like i can't stop reading right yes but, yeah, of course. You're right. even uh, when you send it to an event manager they're not going to read it they're going to glance at it you know um but and that's the beautiful thing once you've done it once and you've put it to bed and it's out there you've got it forever and you never know where it's going to take you my own post book is actually why I'm now a book coach and a publisher. So, you know, you never know where the book's going to take you. And once you've got it, it's there forever. Yeah. Well, Catherine, we want to help folks that are watching this video now. And so I'm wondering now, first off, let me let me share with you as well um, that, um, you know, that uh, if you have a book idea or even the inkling of a book idea, Catherine is good people she she was not she won't do you wrong um and uh you know Catherine I know that you entertain pitches all the time and when I say pitches right it's just like you know people you know probably have thought about a book idea and again you have a lot of experience with this and you know probably in a quick 15 minute call you could probably figure out what the right next steps would be for someone yeah. based on kind of where they're at and the maturity of the whole business around it, the business plan around it, and also the idea itself, right? As you kind of, you know, get have them go through the outline and so forth. And and um, tell, would you mind, and by the way, I've yeah. put this URL on the on the page right now. Just go to upmyinfluence.com slash book. Um, 
It's not an affiliate link. <laughs> Catherine's just a dear friend of mine. Um, I don't make any money if you work with, I mean, it's, it's so just go talk to Catherine. I, I'm doing this because I really know that, um, you know, there are folks that I've interviewed all the time and, um, you know, it's like me, right? I, I, I just have not done the book. And again, I'm waiting. I, cause I, there's a few more things I need to get done. Um, and then I'll do it. And I'm working with Catherine. Um, but again, just go to upmyinfluence.com slash book. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to put you on Catherine's schedule page. Grab, yes. and it's like 15, 30 minutes or something like that. And minutes, um, yeah. so Catherine, you'll, you, no charge. Um, you'll visit with no, her. No charge now, to your friends. You talked me into it. So, um, and what, what I really want to do is like, I believe clarity is a gift. So I want to help people get that clarity of, is now even the right time for you to write a book? And to be honest, I've told quite a lot of people come back to me in 12 months, you know, because they need to get something else sorted in their business, right? And I'm not attached to the outcome because I believe that the universe kind of conspires in our favor and the right things happen at the right time, right? So if we put that clarity there for you, that can help. And if that means now is not the time to write the book, great, you can take it off your plate and focus on something else. But I can also introduce you to people who might help you with whatever it is you need help with. I have an amazing network. But then also, if now's a great time, what's the right book? What's the right topic? You know, what are you covering? What's the right genre? And also, how are you going to be able to leverage the book so that it becomes a business? Yeah. So I have experience and have these connections who help with paid speaking and what makes a great speaker and and, you know, with, with podcasts and with media, I was a publicist for 15 years. So I know, you know, what makes great media for your book idea. So I, when I talk to someone, I can already go clunk, 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 clunk and see all the pieces, how they need to fall. And then that's what I can let people know. You know, Catherine, that's so valuable because like in, in media consulting, the one thing that we look for is what's the hook? right? And the yeah. hook is what's going to get you in. And so because you have that background as a publicist, your brain is already there, right? Because that's what people are going to do, right? Is they're going to, it, the book either needs to hook them really quick and, you know, answer an immediate question, you know, ask it, you know, at, you know, it, people want to be able to figure it out in nanoseconds, right? Oh, that's the book about X, right? And so, um, that part is just yeah. so, you know, we talk about this, like in, in media consulting is like, okay, so I'm the expert that what, right. And so what, what are you an expert in the media love to answer that. And when we talk about how you're going to get publicity for the book, media is a broad term. We could be talking about podcasts. We talk about, you know, YouTubers, you know, pop bloggers, um, you know, other social yeah. media, um, individuals, they're all, in my opinion, under that media umbrella, because you want to work with all of them so that they can celebrate you far and wide when the book does come out. Totally. And, you know, I, I have a lot of people who they think that they'll pitch, they'll pitch media saying, I've got a book out. The media aren't there, especially broadcast media no. and that kind of thing. They're not there to promote your book, man. No. They don't care about your book. They don't want to give you free publicity. So we look at what's the actual book that their audience is going to care about. And that's why editors and, you know, those kinds of people care about your book is when you're pitching it in a completely different way about what you can do for the reader and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's a really, really, they used to call me the pitching queen when I worked in media because everything I pitched got picked up. So I have a pretty good understanding of media and editors and journalists and all of these good people. And uh, that's, that's the fun part. I don't deliver that. I know people who do it, but I made the decision to step out. But the beautiful thing is being able to see that whole journey with the book as part of it. Yeah. All right. So, Catherine, let's talk about maybe early, early, early first steps, right? Because, again, we get overwhelmed when we think about, oh, everything that needs to get done. Like, it's okay if this takes you six months, 12 months, two years. It's yeah. okay, right? Uh, because, you know, we're talking about something that you're probably going to put your little bit of your heart and soul into. And it, it we just do this thing one bite at a time. So Catherine, if I you mean, were to, you know, someone's like, okay, I don't really know. Ex I mean, I know generally, 
you know, but I don't have anything written down. I've got maybe a bunch of blog articles over here, or maybe some webinars I've done. I've done some podcasts and I've, I've taught all this stuff. Like, so it's maybe it's a uh, 50% written in, you know, all these different places. Uh, if I come to you with that scenario, where would we go from there? Look, when someone comes to me and says, oh, good news, I have 10 years worth of notes that we can turn into a book. Um, <laughs> it's a really, and it is an overwhelming place to start. And that's how people end up with 10 years worth of notes because they're constantly trying to do all of the things and, and not just starting with the really simple couple of first steps. And if you Google how to write a book, you get 4.5 billion results or something last time I mm. checked. So, um, what we would do is kind of temporarily pretend that all that stuff didn't exist and just get super clear on those really basic things. And Josh, you'd be surprised how many people don't think about the very simple first couple of steps. And that is firstly, what's the book going to do for you? And you'd be, and this is like a mind blow for most people because you need to think about what the book's going to do for you in your career because you're going to be talking about this book for the next let's say two years minimum and it will always be available for people but you know with an entrepreneur you, you tend to want to grow and do new things so let's say it's going to be around for two years what's the right book that you want to talk about for the next two years and as an example yeah. i had a client who was a naturopath who said, I've spent 10 years as a naturopath. I'm so grateful for those 10 years. But if I have to tell one more person what they need to eat, I'm going to die. <laughs> so she, even though she was going to write a book about naturopathy, when I had this call with her initially and, and I was asking about what you want to do and what do you want to be talking about and who do you want to be attracting into your world for the next two years, she said, oh, well, if I have to keep talking about naturopathy, I'm going to scream. I don't want to talk about that anymore. And what she wanted to do was women's feminine empowerment and, you know, feminine essence and these things. And that was actually a new topic to her. So the book we chose was a stretch topic where she gets to talk about something she's excited about and have her audience grow with her. So the first really crucial step that I work on with people is where's the book going to take you? So let's make sure we're picking the right genre, the right style, the right tone, and the right topic and audience before you do anything else. Because when you're really clear on that, all of a sudden people go, boom, oh my gosh. They knew they wanted to write a book, but they never sat down and thought about that part. And all of a sudden the book takes off. Yeah. You know, the so, process takes off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, okay. So um, what about, um, you know, again, we've, we've got this, this information all over the place and and it, are there tools that we should be using i mean what what are the tricks of the trade um that we would do to start maybe you know getting the outline and kind of filling things in knowing i i, I don't know i i guess it's yep. the the organizing that i'm you know kind of hung up on because i think that's where i'm at i would tell you catherine my book is probably 80 percent of you know just because i produce so much video i produce so many podcasts like it's it's all out there and i've got some assistants you know that could help me kind of pull this together but is there is there a great platform or tool to kind of maybe help organize all of this Look, I mean, there are tools like there's something called Scrivener, for example. Yeah, where I've it's heard of like it. A cork board. Yeah, it's like a cork board for a book where you put all your bits and organize it. Look, the problem with coming with all the stuff, it's a bit like, you know, when you haven't done your shopping for three weeks and you want to make dinner and you look in the cupboard and you say, hmm, I have a tin of beetroot and I have a cucumber and I have, you know, you you find five things in your cupboard. And I don't know if you've done this, but I've been known to Google recipe and then I just type in the five things I've got in my cupboard and I try and see if I can find a recipe that utilizes <laughs> the five ingredients. And it's a little bit like doing that, that what people do is they have all this information and they try to stuff it together into a book right the difficulty is that book doesn't necessarily flow and of course your topics are going to be all complementary but the book doesn't necessarily flow and doesn't necessarily uh achieve your objective so what i'd say is write the outline first don't sit, then you're never sitting down to a blank page you can get really clear on the journey in the book you need to know the audience journey where they're starting where they're finishing what you want them to think feel and do as a result of reading your book 
and the outline it's really simple you can just sit and brainstorm for five minutes everything with that topic that you want to talk about then you sit for another five minutes and put them in order then you sit for another 15 minutes and put some bullet three to five bullet points under each one and honestly people i had a client who came to me she'd spent two years working on her outline two years and she had about 250 things in her outline wow and i said let's pretend that nothing exists. Your outline doesn't exist. None of your notes exist and all of that. And we sat down and followed this process, brainstorm five minutes, brainstorm five and brainstorm 15. And in 25 minutes, she had an outline that she loved. And she said to me, how on earth did I spend two years coming up with this non-workable outline and you've just done it for me in 25 minutes? And it's because people massively overthink it. Because all you need to do is just decide on in order where you want the reader to start and where you want them to end. And then boom, 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 boom. And you have your 10 or 15 topics, flesh them out into bullet points. You've got your outline and then you're never sitting down to a blank page and you start writing. Yeah. So I, I just do that on paper or on Google Docs or Word. People don't really need a fancy tool, but if someone's that kind who wants that tool, something like Scrivener is great. Yeah. Um. I wonder too if folks um, sometimes like guilt kind of creeps in and they're they're worried that like they haven't done it yet and you know how much does psychology play and I know you've gotten to work with a lot of authors so you've seen all the stuff right um, you know because sometimes we get in our way right and we let excuses get in our way um, but what what we don't want Catherine why I wanted you on here is I wanted you to help crush those excuses and and crush those fears right what what do you see in terms of like maybe people's fears or concerns or their yeah. you know getting in their own way yeah there's a few and look first off i'd say you're exactly where you need to be and so don't even worry that you haven't done something or that you have done something right that you're exactly in the right place and you will feel when it's time. You might, then you put up your resistance and I'll talk about those. So the common things that people say are, <clears throat> you know, like I don't have time. That's really common. Now as an entrepreneur, and if you're a parent as well, you're literally never gonna have time to do anything for the rest of your life, right? So just accept it. And you have to just make time once you make it a priority. So Firstly, we can easily work out a schedule. You know, I actually only did 20 to 30 minute writing sessions on, on my last book as well, because I thought my day is massive. I never tell people to try and get a three hour window to write a book. It's just 15, 20, 30 minutes a day like this every day. And that builds that momentum and, and that consistency. And that's what gets books written. But the other thing people worry about is, well, firstly, what are people going to think? Who am I, who am I to write a book? Yeah. And those are really common self-sabotaging thoughts. Imposter but syndrome. Honestly, yeah. And it's, I see it so often. And yet when I see the book and the idea and the person and their knowledge, you don't need to sell 5 million copies of your book and be a New York Times bestseller to have success with your book and to change people's lives. I've had clients who actually are quite introverted, who, who don't have a very big business but they really, really feel passionately and want to change someone's life about something. Have you ever, and this happened with me, I read one thing in a book that to be honest, wasn't even the greatest book. And it was half plagiarized from Tony Robbins anyway, but I read <laughs> this one thing and I followed what he said and it literally changed my life. It's why I have the business that I have today because he said something, I followed his direction to email some people and it honestly changed my life. And yet I've never met this guy, you know, whatever the book had been recommended to me. One thing you say can honestly change people. So you kind of don't know what that thing is and who that person is, but you can have this ripple effect that does impact people because you actually have something of value to give people. There are people who are 10 steps behind you, five steps behind you, two steps behind you, who just want to know the thing that you know. So that definitely gets in people's way. And the other thing that I think um, gets in people's way from what people tell me over the years is that they think, well, <clears throat> what if I, what if, my peers read this and they think it's ridiculous or what if I change my mind like what if I 
don't want to do this anymore or if I learn something new and I put in print this other thing that I said, right? I commit to print my idea. What if I end up learning something and I change my mind on that idea? And a lot of people say that to me. And I had one client who did this brilliantly and she said, <clears throat> I reserve the right to change my mind. And this book represents what I think, feel and feel today. And in a year yeah. or five years, when I've completely moved on and I've grown as a person, this book still serves somebody who's five years behind me. Mm. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, that's part of yeah. it too, because the world changes so quickly. And that's probably one of the fears that I have too, is, you know, <sighs> you know, especially if you've got a book and you're talking about tactics and tools, you know, cause those change so fast. Right. Um, you know, yeah. the, you know, for example, like with uh, my influence, you were doing a lot of work around uh, big B2B sales. Like we work with those high level consultants and we load up their schedule. Well, the tools that we were using a year ago, yeah, we use we use them a little bit differently today. Um, just even in yeah. one year, I mean, even in the past month, you know, one of the main tools that we've been using has changed quite a bit. And I, at this point, I wouldn't recommend it because it got sucky. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, so those are the kind of things. Uh, you know, I remember you know speaking at uh, Social Media Marketing World three years in a row, and three years, my advice on. LinkedIn changed three different times just based on, hey, right now. So so anyway, um, I think that the book, however, really gives the opportunity for the author to, to do some great work in community building, right? So here's the, listen, here's the foundation of the book. Now come and join the community and talk about, uh, Catherine, uh, kind of winding down here in our last final few minutes here. Um, but now that you've got the book, um, you know, the opportunity that you have as an author uh, to, to really grow. And of course, you talked about speaking and that sort of thing. Um, but I think there's a huge opportunity to building a community and then offering products and yeah. services. Um, again, if you've got that book, which is kind of that entryway uh, for many people into yeah. that community. Yeah, absolutely. And look, with with talking about tools, you're right, that can be tricky. And so there is a, a, and basically you can do a new edition of the book. You just get a new ISBN, you do an updated edition. People do that. Yeah. And that gives you a new opportunity for new promotion as well. Um, the other thing is people write another book or, or you include things in the book that are more timeless as well as those tools. So, you know, and it sh still shows people that you're an expert and you could say at the time of writing, the tool is such and such, but the larger thing is you're using it to achieve this. So there are ways around that. But yeah, in terms of building a community, and that's what I've seen that some of my clients do exceptionally well. And Carly, who I mentioned, Carly Marie, uh, she is one of the, she's the person who went from 100 grand a year to 100, 200 grand a month. Because the book was this really like low kind of barrier entry into her world. It was, you know, a $7, $10, I don't know, however much it was, not very mm. many dollars book. And people read that and went, oh my goodness. And they just came and followed her. And then she had the opportunity to do lives and to do posts and to talk about who she was and kept directing people to her page, to her paid offers, to her groups. And her business has absolutely expo exploded. And other clients have done the same thing. The book is this really great, because people don't feel pressure when they're reading a book. They can absorb your book at their own, at their own pace. They can see it and have a quick look. Some people read two or three chapters and they already know that you're the person that mm. they want to have in their world. Yeah. So it's a really good opportunity to build community. You know, Catherine, um, so you, uh, you know, again, you've worked with so many different authors um, and there's a lot of different levels that you can help people at, right? You've got the free... You, you provide so much free information. Go to changeempire.com and you'll see some stuff, you know, follow Catherine on all the socials. But, um, you know, the offer that you made, um, and, and thank you so much for doing this, um, is and, and you're going to be busy. <laughs> so this is very simple. You go to upmyinfluence.com. It's up right there. There's a link right there. Upmyinfluence.com slash 
book. And that will, um, we created that shortcut link because we were like, Catherine was giving me her schedule link. I'm like, oh, that's hard to spell. So yeah, just go right there. All it's going to do is just put you on Catherine's schedule. Um, you can grab 15, 30 minutes with Catherine. Picture your book idea. Catherine, you give lots of free advice. I know you've done a lot of yeah. help for a lot of great people. You've got communities. You've got like, simple small yeah. like you've got to go go through the different um you know in the last few minutes that we have like the different levels that you help people yeah i mean look i i had originally started with just like a one-on-one -on -one offer a few years ago but over time i realized you know there are people who want help at different levels so we have like an online course that's you know a a pretty uh, accessible entry kind of price, but I'm still live in there. I'm still doing Q and A's and training. We have a masterclass, which is a pre-recorded thing that people can access for you know less than a hundred bucks. We obviously I have a book, but we also have one-on-one -on -one support with your own writing coach, and and we can also do small groups as well if people want to get together and sort of share the coaching. So there are a few different options of working with me and with my writing coaches and our team and. And you know, on my on my uh, Facebook page, the Change Empire Book Coaching page, I have at least a hundred videos that are all sort of three, four, five minutes long that sh that talk about like every aspect of writing books and editing. So people can go and stalk me and look at all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then obviously use that link that you gave them to have a chat with me. And I'm never going to try and sell somebody. Like I'm the worst high pressure salesman in the world. <laughs> Um, <laughs> which which makes you the best because you truly care about other people. And listen, um, I, I just got to tell you that, uh, you know, I've done 850 some interviews on the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. Catherine is my go-to expert um, for all things books. Um, Catherine, you've got the right energy. You care about people. Um, you, you can help people no matter what level they're at. I mean, if they're just getting started and they don't have any budget, you've got great resources to help them. Um, and certainly, you know, again, if you're dealing with someone that's, you know, super busy, running lots of things and just someone like me, you can make the job so much easier uh, and you have those levels as well. So, Catherine, you're yeah. my go-to person. Twice, twice a year, I go right Twice a year, I ghostwrite memoirs for people who definitely don't have any time. Yeah. So we have every, we have every option. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. All right, so Catherine Mora, uh, again on the on the screen right now, you'll see upmyinfluence.com/book. Um, it's not a filling link; it's just a, a link, the shortcut link that we set up for Catherine, so you can get on her schedule yeah. easier. Um, I was you could technically challenged, so Josh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can also right on the screen here. You can look; it's change empire.com there i'll put it right there in the middle so you don't miss it right over right over my face change empire.com and someone's going to need to help me on all this uh the live streaming stuff i'm i my technically i'm like looking at my mixing and how i'm handling the studio it's real sloppy <laughs> But listen, Catherine, you are wonderful. Thank you for waking up so early on a Saturday morning. To everybody else that's been watching this, you know, no matter when you're watching, certainly if you've been watching this live or you're watching this on Friday, have an amazing weekend. Go get your book done. Go reach out to Catherine. Have her give you a hand. Have her help you out. Pitch her on your book idea. She will give you the straight scoop on that. Uh, Catherine, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been Thank fantastic. You. I appreciate you again waking up early with us. Have a Thank wonderful so weekend, everybody.